In my church in Orient, I'm the almost the first one who promoted the work of the woman in the God's ministry. Because in Orient, women has no voice for more than 5,000 years. Holy Spirit asked me to start a home cell system. So when I invited deacons to open their home and carry out home cell system, but one by one they turned down. And they said, we are not trained to do that, and we are not qualified, and we want to have our own privacy in our home, and more than anything else, we are paying you to do that. <laughs> so I was absolutely denied to use men as a home cell leader. And when I was in great discouragement, then the Spirit said, go and use women. I said, women? <laughs> I've never seen women working as a representative, a minister, or an important place in Korea. I'm afraid. Then the Spirit says, I'm not afraid. Why are you afraid? <laughs> to make long story short, I asked the women, to come together. And when I explained the home cell system, they all volunteered to work with me together. And I trained them and I set the fire on them and they began to preach gospel. All over Seoul, after 10 years, I found out that we had 18,000 active members. Now we have 19,000 cell leaders and 90% of cell leaders are all women. And without saving women, I can't build the kingdom of God in Korea. <laughs> so I do respect Marlene Hickey very much, very highly. When you read Ephesians 6, chapter verse 15, and your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God will not let you walk on this life with bare feet, hurting yourself. God has given more than 7,000 promises in the Bible. Those are your shoes. Are you sick? Then God gives you the shoes to walk upon the sickness and devil. By his stripes ye were healed. That is your shoes. Are you poverty stricken? Then go through the Bible, find the shoes. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, that ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you may become rich in Jesus Christ. You can find the shoes and just put the shoes on and just walk upon the poverty situation. Do you have any fear? and rest less in your heart. Go to the Bible and find the shoes. I give you my peace. So when you study Bible, you can find the plenty of shoes and you can be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and you can walk, live boldly, victoriously. You know, walking is activity of human beings and when you uh, Acts as a business person, politicians, and father and mother, and there are plenty rocky places and thorny places, and then you can still walk on those places with victory and without getting any hurt at all. In 1958, when I first started my ministry, oh, I was totally poverty stricken. I bought an ex American marine tent and I threw a few mats, and we were having service there. And I had nothing to eat day in, day out. I was starved. I was fasting and praying, not because I was spiritual, but I had nothing to eat. <laughs> and in less than one year, I had packed up more than eight times to leave my ministry, thinking that I was not called into ministry. Because I tried to win soul for eight months and I couldn't even lead one soul to Jesus Christ. I was total failure and then finally I was scrambling for the message. I preached all the messages of Billy Grahams and I borrowed all the messages from Oral Roberts. 
and I placed all the mesh of the ashbone and nothing left. And I couldn't have anything and my well completely dried up. I said, I'm going to leave now. I'm not cold. At that time, I couldn't even dream that I would have 300,000 members. I became desperate. And not only spiritually, I was having dried up uh, well, but materially, I was so poverty streak and I was so poor. And I was ready to give up. And there, one day, God showed me himself. God said, my son, you have a traditional God in your consciousness. Traditional God who would not give even kid to you. You have a traditional faith, not biblical faith, God said. Traditional faith to become holy and sanctified, you should live a poverty stricken life. You should only live with one suit. He said, that's traditional. But why don't you search the Bible? You search the Bible, God said. Except the redemptive suffering, I don't want you to suffer. Through your suffering, if redemptive grace flow out and help others to be redeemed, then that suffering is welcome. But except the redemp redemptive suffering, I don't want you to suffer. But I said, Jesus, Bible asked me to follow after the step of Jesus Christ and suffer. Then the Spirit began to reveal truth to me. Okay, then calculate. What kind of suffering Jesus Christ suffered? Did he ever suffer because of personal sin? I said, no. Then you must never suffer because of your personal sin. Did he ever suffer because of sickness? Did he ever have fever and lying flat on his back and inviting doctors? I said, no. Then you are not supposed to, if you follow after the step of Jesus Christ. Then the Spirit said, did he ever suffer because she had nothing to eat? Were he going around starved? I said, yes, he was quite uh, poverty stricken. But God said, read the second Corinthians in chapter 8, verse 9. His poverty stricken life was redemptive suffering so that you may have abundance. Yeah. Then he said, was he ever suffering being possessed by devil? I said, no. No. All means no. Then he said, you should not suffer by demon possession. On, on and on the spirit began to speak to me. If you ever follow after the suffering of Jesus Christ and you should not suffer those things which Jesus Christ did not suffer. Then God began to reveal the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But I said, oh, Job was poor. Yes, he was poor when he was passing through the trials. But God blessed him twice as much as he first had. Oh, but Noah was poor. What? Scientists are saying that to build a no, uh, ark such as Noah built, presently it will take $20 million. He was terrifically rich. Oh, Paul! Paul was poverty stricken. Don't kid. Paul was not poor. Paul just spent everything for the redemptive work. Paul was traveling constantly. And he was not only traveling by himself, but he was taking a bunch of his disciples. He was paying all the expenses of traveling, and he was clothing them and feeding them and everything. But still, the Bible says Paul has never fallen into the debt. He says, except the debt of love, do never incur any debt. And also he was carrying out business and he was making tent. You know, if you move your business place every week, then you can't get prosperous business. But he was moving his business place from Rome to the Corinth, from Corinth to the Athens. And still he was making tent and selling and he made enough profit to feed all of his disciples. He made an enormous amount of money, but he spent all for the glory of God. So he rather voluntarily chose the poor life because he gave everything. That kind of life is wonderful. You know, anything you suffer because you voluntarily do it to carry out the work of God, that is praiseworthy. But any suffering which comes to you and make you invalid, then that's from devil. You fight. You should conquer and shake up that kind of suffering. 1959, I says, God, I make determination. You know, in many cases, you must make determination. I, says, I now, today, make determination to prosper. And so I would make determination to prosper so that I may have something to give to others. 
and I make determination because I got the lady knowledge of God and uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God and by the word I got the faith and uh, then I determine not to sway here and there as I make determination. I'm going to practice the third John second verse and I'm determined and I'm going to prosper and victorious. And ever since God began to open the door of heaven and God began to pour out his blessing upon me. And many a times with my wife together, we volunteered to become poor because we were constantly building churches. This has been our third church building. And she said, right, let's give everything to the Lord and let's voluntarily become poor. So we gave all of our house and all the saving to him. But now I found one thing that it is most difficult thing under heaven to become poor. <laughs> this has been proved in my life. We have given everything, then God would use that measure and pay it to me. When God gives you, God gives you, pressed it down, shaken together, running over to your bosom. Are you still starved? Are you still tired? Are you still cold? Are you still unhappy with bitterness and anger? But still you are Christian, yes. Still you are going to heaven, yes. Surely. Still you are called creator, heaven and earth. My father. But why do you stay outside the gate? He is inviting you tonight. Here. He is inviting you right now. Right now. You can come. You can surrender your lives to God. You can give up all of those wrong attitudes. Tonight, you can be recreated. You can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you can become victorious. And you will tell many things to give to others and to share with others. God is a good God. And God wants to show His goodness through your life. In Jesus' name I bless you. Amen.